All right, guys, thank you for that carrier update. And we'll, of course, have one more, as Thomas mentioned. Right now, we're going to bring in our next live guest. We've got Kevin Hill joining us for an update on what's going on in the sales space. Kevin, thank you for being here. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you guys, too. Always, always great to see you. So we're looking at closing rates and how do you evaluate a salesperson in terms of you know, how effective they are. Obviously, there's different volumes, different times. What do you When you look at evaluation of a salesperson, in terms of, of, of overall success, how big of a factor is closing rates to you? I, I know they're, they're important to a lot of people. They're not really all that important to me. Um, so the actual deals closed is the most important metric. So sometimes you don't really control your 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 close rate, right? That is something that sometimes is outside of your control. Uh, what you can manage, though, is your, as Brent Orsuka told me years ago, your activity and your attitude, and that all goes into prospecting. So if you have more prospects in the top of your funnel, you can have a horrible close rate and still be the best salesperson on the floor. Uh, so I, I know a lot of people really do put a lot of importance into the close rates. I don't really. I mean, you should always be trying to improve them, but I don't think um, I, I don't think they're the end all be all. So, Kevin, as we head into the start of the year, for a lot of these sales folks who have survived 2023 and they made it through, they are likely going to be sitting down with their managers or for a one-on-one -on -one coming up later on. And the topic of discussion will, of course, be your 2023 performance. Some of those KPIs that will be brought forward, as you mentioned, were your activity, the calls that you made, but also that closer it will be something that comes up in topic of conversation. How do you, as a salesperson, help kind of direct that conversation maybe to your manager to say, okay, you know, what maybe my sales my close rates like a uh, 25 to 30 percent but look at how much i did getting new prospects into the pipeline who are still there to make it a positive conversation versus a negative one yeah so i mean that's, that's a good way to, to start kaylee is is talk about your prospects who you have in the pipeline i think everyone kind of knows 2023 was a tough year especially in brokerage and the more brokerages i, I talk to on a daily basis uh the, the more i realize that too and everyone kind of accepts that now, what you have is not closing a deal. No, not right now, but having those those prospects in the pipeline and framing in that way is that when that need arises, when capacity um, slims down and demand goes up, uh, hopefully in the second quarter of 2024, you know, big hope there, um, that the, those no, not right now, so, you know, that those people that you have on the pipeline that you haven't closed, that's taking forever, uh, will eventually close when the need arises. Uh, and I, I think that's what I hear from a lot of freight brokers right now is a lot of no, not right now. No, right, not right now because of the, the market conditions that Donnie and, and Thomas were, were talking about uh, just a few minutes ago. Kevin, how do you evaluate the closing rate when it comes to uh, a person who maybe has a high closing rate but low revenue coming in, as opposed to someone who may have a low closing rate, but at the same time, they're going after the whales. They're going after the big things there as well. Do you, do you put any, any weight into how you evaluate a salesperson based on that kind of metric? Yeah, and that's where it becomes more of an art than a science when you're evaluating that because you're talking about wells, right? That is going to have a longer sales cycle, uh, more transactional business. You're going to have a higher close rate probably and uh, a shorter sales cycle along with that. So you have to take those into account, right? It was that dollar value at the end of the day, what's that dollar value opportunity that, that you're bringing in and how you're managing that. So if, if you're talking about wells, you have to think about a, a longer sales cycle and maybe do a weighted average on that, get a little creative when it comes to that, because it's just not apples to apples. It's apples to oranges when you, whenever you're talking about deal values, right? So you could close out a lot of lower deal value um, type of business opportunities. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. If you're talking about the higher deal values, uh, that's just going to take longer to close. And it's a different management and, and sales process along with that timeline too. So you just have to be aware of all those nuances that, that, that you're looking at as a, a sales manager or director. 
So Kevin, we live in a world where a lot of sales, no matter what sector you're in, if it's tech sales, if it's brokerage, a lot of this process is gamified, right? And we use that to kind of, it's a psychology effect that we use it to play to the human preference. And it is a, it's a game. And a lot of your competitors, whether that's your fellow salespeople or your management or your higher ups, can see that progress very easily laid out, that data distributed. Do you think that closing rates are one of those things that can really kind of be a good side of gamification and showing those and making them publicly displayed? It can be something to help encourage competition, or is that something where, as Bill mentioned, you might have a low close rate but a high revenue rate, that it shouldn't necessarily be visible to everybody because it could be not necessarily the metric that people need to be focusing on to compete? It should be visible to everybody, and, and you're right about that. It might not be the the key metric that that you should be judged by, but you know, if you if you go into gamification, if you go into the sports, you know, you have stats on on every single thing that you do especially like like in baseball right but but what's your your kpi what, what's the, the the main thing is it ops is it batting average is it walks is it pitches per plate appearance who knows so but they all kind of go into that that final number and i think in sales that final number is dollars brought in total and how you get there is a little bit it's going it, it, to you know, depending on your deal value, depending on your, your sales method and your strategy and just your, your personal preference, it's, it's going to change rep by rep. You know, some reps are really good at bringing in a lot of lower value or lower dollar value deals. But if they're the highest on the board when it comes to, to revenue, and um, I, th I think revenue would equal to OPS or, or wins, right? Um, that, that is where everyone should really finally be judged at the end of the day. Kevin, uh, let's say you're on the move. You're a salesperson. You're looking to go someplace else, and you may be in the top 5%, again, revenue-wise or close rate-wise within your own firm, but that might not necessarily be even you know, in the, in, the, in, in the talking points in terms of who's the top seller at the, at the places that you want to work at. When you're looking to make that move, is the closing rate simply something that you should put out there if you've got a high closing rate, or is you simply should you stick to the revenue in terms of, I brought in this amount of dollars, even though that amount of dollars may not be equitable to what your next firm hopefully uh, was, is looking for you to bring in if you get hired. Yeah, it really depends on the situation. So I, I would lead with uh, your closing rate. If it's really good, definitely lead with it. You know, if you have a lot of great prospecting metrics, I would lead with that. You know, I, I throw everything into the mix. And you're right, that revenue number might not be in the same revenue ballpark as that this next job, but those metrics are a key indicator, right? Because a lot of times, you know, are, are good salespeople good salespeople because they're naturally good salespeople or is the system that they're in right now, is that transferable to another company? And I think that's a, a big thing to uh, to hit upon if you're looking for another job is is to, to single out why you succeeded in the system that you were in and why you'll succeed in the system that you're going to. Because a lot of that has to do with uh, a lot of your sales ability and your your metrics and the revenue on the board goes with the system that you're in and going back to a baseball analogy right that the angels had um the the the, the two-way pitcher um i can't think of his name off the top of my head yeah. and mike trout yeah exactly they never saw the the, the playoffs right two great two, two of the greatest players in the in the game today never never sniffed the the, the playoffs right so and then you take Texas Rangers won the, the World Series. Uh, that they assembled a, a team of people in, the, in a great system that went out and, and, and won it all. So sales is, is very analogous to that. Way to throw in a team there that's very close to your present location as well there, Kevin. Thanks so much for joining us, and again, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Bill. All right, let's move it back over to Kaylee with our next check of weather. 